So here it is after two years of waiting. I'll spare you the tedium of an unboxing. Hi, welcome to my workshop. My name's Darren. And as you could probably tell from the introduction, this is another episode of 3D Prints in the Workshop. Now in this one we'll be focusing mostly on large scale prints. Uh, there will be some small prints in here as well for people with regular sized printers. And at the end we'll take a look at the Prusa XL itself and ask the question, is a large scale printer something you would use? And is the Prusa XL the one to pick if you do? All right, let's have a look at what we've got. Okay, so I've got quite a few tool storage ideas here for you. Let's run through them fairly quickly. I'll show you the items themselves, and then I'll show you how they all fit into my storage system, just to give you some ideas. I'm going to make the really wild assumption that most of you watching don't actually have a large format printer at this point in time. So we'll start with the smaller models first, just to give you an idea of uh, things you can do yourself, and then we'll move on to the bigger ones. So this one's an Incra protractor. It's a very nice protractor. So I built this little storage system here just to protect it from being nicked and bumped and bent. And it just lifts out of there. <laughs> and there's my, there's my old style protractor, which I store in the middle of it. Also, it saves on a bit of plastic when you're printing it if it's done this way. And there's a little bit of storage stuff around the top there as well. So that's the first one. That's the Incra storage tray. Now this is a bit storage tray I use up in the house in my toolbox there. And I have actually already made this tray available on printables. But what we've got underneath is something that is long overdue. And that's the tray it's meant to match up with. So I've got all my, my actual bits there. But down underneath, I've got things like the extenders for the bits. And a few small screwdrivers and things. And it takes up a lot less space in the tool drawer. For here in the workshop, uh, I've got a lot of other screwdrivers and I don't use as many of these bits because I'm using regular screwdrivers. So I've got a much smaller tray, but it's doing the job. Got all the bits stored in there nicely. Little finger holes so they're easier to remove down the center there. And then again, there's another little tray that matches with it. So as uh, they stack nicely and save a bit of space. And again, I've got things like extenders, uh, long bits and so on. Spare bits that I don't use much. Okay, and if we have a quick glance down here, you can see I've already made trays for my small planes, router plane and my little wooden smoothing plane at the back there. Well, it's not that little. But I wasn't able to make storage trays for my larger planes because the Prusa uh, Mark III just wasn't big enough. But as soon as I got the Prusa XL, yeah, so as soon as I got the Prusa XL, I started printing holders for my larger planes. So I've got one for my Veritas smoothing plane, my Veritas scraping plane, or as I call it, the unused plane, <laughs> my record number five, and I believe that's an exact copy of a Stanley number five four plane. So if you've got a number five four plane, that should fit. And my record number four smoothing plane. Again, that should be the same size as a Stanley. So if you've got a Stanley, that should work nicely for you. Now over at this drawer, the Prusa XL has allowed me to make some longer trays here for things like scrapers and knives and stuff. These are 300 millimeters long, something I couldn't do before I got the Prusa XL. So yeah, there we go. And if you have a look at the quality of these, the print quality is really nice. So that's something to keep in mind. And I've got great results in PLA and PETG and Typically, PETG can be a bit of a problem, but uh, yeah, the Prusa XL handles it really well. Uh, they say that you get a perfect first layer every time, and to be honest, I have so far, no exceptions. And here you can see the difference they make to the drawer. They all fit in there quite nicely. And there we are. Now you can see there's still a gap up the top here. At the moment, I'm just storing this old Stanley here. I don't use this. It's basically 
missing too many pieces. Uh, someone just gave it to me because they knew I was into woodwork. So with that fella there, they'll probably end up taking that out and putting a different plane in there as soon as I decide what sort of plane I might like. And to be honest, I think I've got all the planes I need. Although I've often thought of getting a chisel plane, but there's a gap there for future expansion as the case may be. But you can see the difference this makes now. When I open and close the drawer, see, the planes don't slide around. They're well protected plastic, so it's not going to scratch the base or anything like that. Okay, and so here's the unit fully assembled, and as you can see, it's running at the moment, printing up a new little organizer for the workshop. So, you're thinking perhaps of buying one for yourself. What are the pros and cons of the Prusa XL? The only real con is the length of these Bowden tubes. If you come all the way back here, this is the filament sensor. Well, technically, there's two filament sensors, but this is the main filament sensor. So when your spool runs down to the end, and it sucks the last piece of filament through there, it's going to stop and tell you to replace the filament, which means everything in that Bowden tube is basically wasted, uh, which is a bit of a disappointment. It's hard to see how much is here because it's all coiled up, but there's more than a meter there. Um, it's probably enough that I could use it for doing a first layer test on one of the other printers, but how often do you do that? <laughs> now, pro number one, obviously, is to build volume, and you're probably already aware that that's 360 by 360 by 360. On the plus side, it is very well thought out. Things run very smoothly and it does a great print. Yeah, so come down here, you can see there are LED lights. There's a little LED light on either print, on the print heads too. As you can see, I've got two print heads on mine. You can get one print head or five or two. So it's actually really handy having a little LED light in the print head because you can see exactly where it's up to. Uh, you can see if it's not printing, which is also a good thing. If it's a bit dark, that can be a bit difficult. The front user panel has been improved upon the Prusa Mini, which was my last little one. I assume this is very much the same as the Mark IV. You may have heard this already, but it does a very smooth job for something that's using a 0.6mm nozzle. The Creator Pro used to be my go-to printer for whenever I wanted to print PETG. Uh, being enclosed, of course, it kept the heat in there and did a, a pretty nice job, I must admit, of PETG. Somewhat limited in size, though, because it has got the smaller build plate. But I think I'm going to end up selling this fella now. All I did while printing this was put a couple of pieces of acrylic still in their packaging either side. Um, on one side, I just held it in place <laughs> with a torch. I literally just lend a torch against it while it was printing. Um, that's all I did to keep the heat in. I mean, there's not a lot of draft in this room anyway. And yet here we are, the nicest results I've ever had with PETG. Uh, there's no lifting in any of the corners. There's no warping. And such a beautiful finish off this textured plate. There's one more thing, as Steve Jobs used to say, and that is that I've now got a club on printables.com for new releases and some of the old classics like this router table center finder in both sizes. You uh, don't have to go hunting around other sites now to find some of these things. It's all available here on printables. Got the old classics are still available for free, of course. So check it out. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below. Okay, now the big question, of course, and probably the reason you wanted to watch this is, is a Prusa XL right for you? Well, let me start with saying it's a great printer. It prints beautifully first time every time, just like advertised on the tin, as they say. And um, it does large format prints. It's 360 millimeters cubed. So that's pretty big. And of course, one second. This fella is actually 390 millimeters long, but I just printed it on the diagonal and it did a great job. So, yeah, 
I'm very happy with it and I would definitely recommend it. Cup, well, the biggest gotcha though is if you're living in Australia, be well aware that Mr. Albanese is going to slug you for over $700 for the joy of bringing one into the country. Okay, because you've got import duty and GST and they're not cheap. So that's something to bear in mind. That caught me by surprise and uh, <laughs> hurt a little bit. But I don't regret it because it is such a great printer and I've had such great luck. Well, not luck. <laughs> and I've had such great performance out of the other two Prusas that I think this is going to last me for years and be really good. Why did I get a two-head printer? To be honest, it was more of a just-in-case. Most of the printing I do is going to be single colour. Every now and again, I might go dual colour. But I think the big thing is, is if you're going to print something, say, out of ASA or something like that, which is a more expensive filament, you can get the world's cheapest PLA and use that as a support material. And so that's a good time to have something like a dual-head printer, especially with large prints, because you can imagine if you're going to use a lot of support material, you want that to be as cheap as possible. So that's going to be somewhere where a dual head is really going to shine. But for a lot of people, I think a single head would do the job if you're just after the larger format. Anyway, overall, I hope that's been of some use. Have a great day, and I will catch you in the next video, which hopefully won't be too long. <laughs> See you later. Bye for now.